This is going to be a quick update on how things are progressing with the NDI router. Now, the last release that I put here on Facebook for people to try introduced the idea of a, a variable size matrix where you could choose the number of inputs and outputs. And I've been developing that a bit further with the addition of presets and the ability to load and save configuration files. So what you see when you start it, uh, looking down here, is that not only can you choose some presets, you can um, put in uh, values for the matrix, number of inputs, number of outputs. You've also got um, a couple of boxes for loading the last configuration, which is linked to automatically saving it when it exits and loading a specific configuration file. Um, because I have just used it, and the last time I used it, it was set to 12 by four, and it had save on exit set up. It saved that configuration, so I'll just go ahead and use this last configuration uh, to create the router. It's coming up on the other screen. Right, let's just drag it in here. And we've got a 12 by four and it remembers the various NDI sources that I've used previously. And if it finds them again the next time, then they turn white. If not, they remain black. Uh, and that's the button at the bottom for saving on exit. So as well as it remembering all the sources, it lets you set up presets and it will remember the configuration of those as well. Uh, so we've got some presets set up here. If I go to preset two, then that's a particular configuration, preset three, preset four, uh, and so on. Um, let's just set this one up so we get router output B, and then you can at least see, hopefully, a couple of things. There we go. Appearing on, on different monitors. Now you do get a delay in the switching which seems to vary in quite an arbitrary sort of way. It's very dependent uh, on the sources themselves. Sometimes it seems to switch very quickly, sometimes it doesn't. Um, basically that's out of my control. All I'm doing is sending NDI routing commands and it's down to, even I found different versions of the NDI DLL. So when it's kind of moved from two to three to 3.5 to 3.6, it's now being tested. Um, I'm seeing different results. Um, so your mileage may vary. That's that's the bottom line with that. It's not necessarily going to replace a live switcher. Sometimes it will. Sometimes when I start it up and I switch across um, a line of inputs, the output just switches bang and it's immediate. But it's, it's a bit unpredictable in my experience as yet. Uh, and I, I don't know why. So anyway, that's, that's a caveat. But if you simply want a device that will act like a, a, a patch bay and send sources from one, one source to another um, kind of virtual destination, then it'll work fine. So let's just have a look at how the presets work. If you change in well, first, firstly, if you select a particular preset, then the preset button goes red. And if you then make a change to the actual button configuration, the preset goes amber, uh, just to show you that, that that was the last active preset. Uh, and that if you now want to save a slightly different version of it, you hold down the control key, click on the button, and it'll go red again. There's a slight flash of uh, a brighter yellow while it's doing that. And if you want to set up a completely new preset, let's say we go like that, and uh, one on there, and there we are. Somewhat arbitrary configuration. Hmm. Not getting any images there. Pick that. Okay. Um, we we'll make that preset 11, hold down the control key, click on preset 11, and that uh, appears. Uh, you can also rename these. If you click on Alt, then you get a chance to uh, call this whatever you like. Uh, test 2. And if for some reason you want to change it back, incidentally, if you if you click on a preset, 
button that doesn't have anything assigned to it, nothing will happen. Likewise, if you uh, try and switch to an input where there isn't anything uh, coming in, it won't actually switch, although I notice that's changing to amber. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so if you want to set a preset name back to the default, if you go shift and click on it, then it resets the name to what it was previously. S selecting inputs is just on the uh, drop down at the bottom. So if you have save last selected, then when you quit, um, we'll do that now. Let's just exit and run the thing again. Uh, you'll, you'll notice even though I've quit the program, I'm still getting my image coming up on this root of B output. It's because the virtual naming still exists even though the program has been closed. Uh, the, the, the router application simply makes the changes, but the changes are then stored in the kind of NDI protocol mechanism, whatever the sort of global overseeing element is. Um, that change will stay until that particular routing um, name has been destroyed. So uh, if I pull this back, recreate the router, pull it back on here, you'll see everything comes up um, as it did before. Preset 11 is there. Uh, it, it doesn't store which preset you last had selected, but that's, that's fairly trivial. Um, what else? Final thing, if you want to save a preset under a different name, uh, because if you have the save last ticked, then it will simply be called last. But if you want to give it a different name and have a whole number of um, different configurations, then you can go to save custom config and give it a name. The file extension is a, a ZRI. I was simply looking for something that I didn't think already existed or certainly wasn't very common. So a Zen router info extension is what you get. Now, another option um, when you're creating the router is that potentially you might want a bigger router. You've, you've got a 12 by four and they think, okay, we actually need uh, a 12 by or a, a 16 by eight. Uh, but maybe you want to keep all the existing inputs and the presets that you've already got. So if you select 16 by eight, now at the moment it's coming up with 12 by four because that was the last config. Um, if I select 16 by eight and create the router, uh, it'll come up with a little message saying not enough data for all inputs because you're now using a bigger configuration, but it will still create it. And it will simply use the first uh, 12 in this case, uh, inputs that you had on the 12 by four. Likewise, the presets will only involve the first four because you didn't have anything higher up previously. But you can then just go ahead and um, extend them. Like if I wanted to sort of extend this particular preset and add some different things to it, then that's basically extended it. And you can do a similar thing in the opposite direction. If you have uh, a configuration that maybe was designed for a, a 12 by four, but you only want um, an eight by two, you can still load that into an eight by two and it will simply use the first eight inputs and create two outputs. Um, so in that sense, reasonably versatile. So I'm nearing the point when I can upload this and release it if I haven't done so already. <laughs> and um, other people can have a play with it and report back and hopefully find some use for it.